Hey everyone, my name is Cinder Quill and welcome back to another video. In my journey to 100% my entire game library, I always have trouble picking which game to do next. Skimming through my games, a certain game caught my eye, Spongebob Battle for Bikini Bottom. Originally released all the way back in 2003, BFBB got a remake in 2020 and I never got around to completing it. So, 100%. What exactly do we need to do? So BFBB is pretty much a collect-a-thon style game similar to the old Banjo and Crash games. In order to 100%, we must collect 100 gold spatulas, collect 80 fossilized socks, get all the health upgrades and bubble abilities, access the movie theater, and of course, complete the game. Like all my 100% playthroughs, I completed this challenge on original hardware as well as streamed the entire run on my Twitch, so feel free to drop by. With the 100% laid out, let's dive in and find out how hard is it to 100% Spongebob Battle for Bikini Bottom. As we head into day one, I always appreciate the early 2000s and the movie and TV show tie-in games. Spongebob is one of my favorite shows ever made, so BFBB is dope because we get a more in-depth look at the areas in Bikini Bottom. Anyways, the game starts out with plankton crane robots to cause havoc on Bikini Bottom, but they rebel. A lot of areas in Bikini Bottom are locked behind shiny objects, which are the currency within the game. We explore Spongebob's house and grab our very first fossil and head inside the closet to grab our very first gold spatula. Heading outside, Plankton is confronted by Spongebob. On top of Squidward's house, we grab a pair of gold underpants to increase our HP. We grab our second gold spatula on top of Spongebob's house. We meet Bubble Buddy and he teaches us the bubble jump thing. I don't know the official name. Meeting up with Patrick, he gives us another fossil and lets us know for every 10, he'll give us a gold spatula. Our best buddy Squidward is not too happy of us being in his home, so he gives us a gold spatula to get out of his hair. We take a taxi to our first destination, Jellyfish Fields. Poor Squidward gets bodied by a gaggle of jellyfish and we're tasked with acquiring King Jellyfish Jelly to heal Squidward. A bit deeper into the level, we get access to Patrick and he has the ability to throw various items and robots. We can even freeze the goo around jellyfish fields using ice blocks which will play a big part in the future. We meet up with Mrs. Puff and she needs us to clear out an island area taken over by robots. After taking care of business, we switch back to Spongebob and it's time to take care of King Jellyfish to get his jelly. That sounds weird. In order to damage the king, we must wait for him to ground pound and he becomes vulnerable. After a few well-timed hits, King Jellyfish is defeated and we can grab the jelly to help Squidward. After his defeat, we get to do the best part of the game, sandboarding. Controls are tight and the music that plays is really dope. We heal Squidward and we head back to Bikini Bottom. Next up is one of my least favorite locations, Downtown Bikini Bottom. We need to help Mrs. Puff find missing steering wheels throughout the level in addition to gold spatulas and fossils. The only real positive I have to say about this level is being able to pretty much explore all of Downtown Bikini Bottom and see places like the shop where Patrick couldn't walk out of because the board was nailed to his head. A bit deeper in, we arrive at the Sea Needle and this is just a ton of precise bungee jumping for Mr. Krabs in order to grab ourselves another gold spatula. Continuing on, we finally get to play as Sandy and her her special ability is the lasso which allows her to swing from stupid to stupid. All my Texas viewers, I apologize, but I'm sure you get it. We eventually run into Larry the Lobster and we need to fix his antenna that the robots have messed up. After some skillful platforming, we help out Larry and switch to Spongebob to take on a sort of enemy wave challenge. Falling from floor to floor, we slowly traverse the bomb taking out robots and their duplication machines. For complete this, we grab a gold spatula and another fossil. Like my Astrobot 100%, I went through levels not with the 100% in mind, but more so to enjoy the playthrough. So with Downtown Bikini Bottom done for now and Mrs. Puff satisfied with all the steering wheels, we make our way to Goo Lagoon. Larry is hanging around and turns out the robots took everyone's sunscreen so we need to take care of business. Using our bubble head, we turn the lifeguard tower reflectors but we're unable to complete this puzzle so we continue on. Finding Mrs. Puff, she's lost some kids who are being taken away by herds of drift loons so we need to save them. After saving all the little fish, Mrs. Puff is so happy she gives us a golden spatula. Coming across a sand fort, we do a time section where we need to beat the goo rising to storm the fort. Destroying some cannons and grabbing a hidden gold spatula, we head inside to the goon caves. Gary is there and lets us know there's a gold spatula to grab. After some platforming and avoiding changing water levels, we grab the gold spatula and move on to the Goo Lagoon Pier, where Mr. Krabs needs some help clearing out robots who have taken over the ticket booth. 
Using SpongeBob, we do some bungee jumping to grab a gold spatula that's out of the way. Back as Patrick, we use an ice block to freeze the lagoon to grab ourselves a gold spatula. We end day one heading back to Goo Lagoon by tossing a melon. In doing so, we can finally take out the bot responsible for stealing the sunscreen that Larry mentioned and we grab our final gold spatula of day one. To begin day two, we unlock access to the Poseidon Dome and meet King Neptune. He challenges us to defeat his champion, the Sandy Bot. We make quick work of the bot and are rewarded a gold spatula for our efforts. We confront Plankton and ask him why the Chum Bucket has a robot headquarters sign, but he plays dumb. Meeting up with Bubble Buddy, he teaches us how to properly bubble bowl. Using this, we can take out enemies and hit buttons from a safe distance. We grab another gold pair of underwear to increase our HP a bit more and head into Sandy Shoals to meet our heroes, Murret Man and Barnacle Boy. Turns out robots have taken over the Mermelair, so we head down to take care of business. We need to reboot the Mermelair security system. Along the way we find the invisible boatmobile, which I think is supposed to be just an easter egg, but a really nice touch. Squidward is down here as well for some reason, but he lets us know to reboot the Mermelair computer. Using Patrick, we complete an obnoxious puzzle where you need to redirect these laser module things, and this took way longer than it should have. Each button spins three at a time, so getting the right pattern takes some time. Through the brute force method, after roughly 15 minutes, the puzzle is complete and Barnacle Boy rewards us with a gold spatula. We head deeper into the Murmur Lair security tunnel. Gary is down here and he lets us know of a gold spatula we can grab. The security tunnel is littered with colored floors that can damage you and elevators so a bit tricky to navigate at times. Being the expert we are, we easily grab the gold spatula and move on to the rolling ball area. Mr. Krabs is here and we have to carefully lead a ball through an assortment of platforms and twists and turns in order to get another gold spatula. Heading back, we finally get the security system running again and arrive at the evil villain containment where a blue prawn is awaiting us. Avoiding his sound waves and robots, we cook the prawn up and freeze him for later. Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy reward us with a gold spatula. Back in Bikini Bottom, Sandy has a leak in her dome from all the robots and we're tasked with clearing the bots out to help her out. Nothing too hard and she rewards us with a golden spatula. Our next stop is Sand Mountain, probably the best level in this game. Sand Mountain is basically snowboarding and as an avid snowboarder, I was very excited to do this level. Like a Giga Chad, we decide to take on the toughest sandboard challenge first, beating Larry the Lobster's time of 120 seconds. Honestly, he had to have cheated because attempt after attempt after attempt and I wasn't even close to beating the time. I mean, I did practically every shortcut avoiding every obstacle and each time I had no chance. After more attempts than I like to admit, I had found a secret path I somehow missed that shaved so much time it was actually insane. Going from not even having a chance to finally being the time with a whopping 9 seconds to spare drove me nuts. The rest of Sand Mountain was a breeze after crushing Larry's time challenge and I wish the game implemented more of the sandboarding aspect into the game. Yes, I'm well aware later levels have it, but it's usually very brief. So as I'm trying to leave Sand Mountain, I have a word with Squidward and boom, the game freezes. Slightly panicking as it is very late at night and I forgot the game auto saves, I really thought I'd redo all of Sand Mountain. Luckily we're in the future and auto save is pretty much in every game made now so woohoo for that. So after completing arguably the best level in the game, we head to the worst part of the game, rock bottom. It's not that I hate rock bottom. It's just very confusing area to me. Once again, Mrs. Puff has lost something and honestly, Mrs. Puff should not be allowed to overlook anything at this point as she loses whatever she's in possession of. I won't go into super detail, but for some reason, my Twitch chat is notoriously down bad. Why? I'm not sure as I run a clean professional channel with upstanding citizens and standards, but this is one of the few times that chat came in clutch. Since I hate rock bottom, they would just say outlandish things and it made the level go by so much faster. So if you're a Twitch member, I thank you, but stop being down bad. Eventually, we make our way to the rock bottom museum. Museum, museum, I, I get told I say it weird, let me know, maybe I do. This place is filled with lasers and a lot of platforming. Sandy and her last ability make a lot of the would-be trickier portions of platforming super easy. Using Sandy still, we activate three lasers to grab ourselves yet another gold spatula, as well as open up a new path to exit rock bottom. Going through, we arrive and find Mr. Krabs who tells us to save a gold spatula by sliding down, well, the slide. We've collected all the paintings Mrs. Puff has lost and we officially end day two with 53 gold spatulas. 
We begin day 3 by unlocking the final section of Bikini Bottom. As we do, a giant robot Patrick attacks us out of nowhere and it's up to Sandy and Spongebob to defeat it. This fight is actually a bit tricky as acid fills the room and the only real safe areas are moving conveyor belts. Using the power of bowling, we hit the Patrick bot from the back until it can't take it no more. To defeat it and grab a golden spatula. Bubble Buddy is here to teach us a new move, the Cruise Bubble, which spawns an explosive bubble we can pilot. We clear the Krusty Krab of robots for Mr. Krabs and we grab another gold spatula. The Krusty Krab holds another secret, our final health upgrade. In the sign, a gold pair of underwear awaits us. With that, we enter my second hated level, Kelp Forest, and you guessed it, Mrs. Puff has lost campers this time around. Ignoring her for now because she probably should not be in charge of anyone at this point, we head inside the Kelp Swamp. Mr. Krabs lets us know we need to place three stone heads to continue through the level. It's a bit tricky so we decide to move on and meet up with Barnacle Boy who has us collecting crystals in order to get a gold spatula. This part involved a lot more thinking than I had anticipated as you need to use Spongebob to cruise missile switches then switch to Patrick to gather stone heads to activate kelp leaves and so forth. Out of all the puzzles this game has to offer, this is by far the most challenging and very refreshing. Barnacle Boy is ecstatic. We gather the crystals and reward us with a gold spatula. Heading even deeper, we take on the kelp vines. Mermaid Man has a time challenge for us and we absolutely crush it in our first attempt so no repeat of Larry. We eventually help Mrs. Puff to find her lost campers and we can finally leave Kelp Forest. Next up is the Flying Dutchman's Graveyard. The Flying Dutchman ship has been overtaken by robots and it's up to us to free it. A new bot and probably the toughest bot in the game is introduced. These bots will spit oil at you as well as have a shield that only projectiles can destroy. Just annoying overall to deal with. Most of the graveyard is solving jump puzzles by pushing massive pillars so we can wall jump. A bit deeper in we arrive at the Flying Dutchman ship and we need to defeat the bots that have attached to a ship. We need to destroy various things on this robot ship including electrical current devices powering the ship's cannons. In doing so, the ship is freed and the Flying Dutchman agrees to give us a gold spatula, but he won't give it up unless we beat him. This fight is comically easy as he just shoots eye lasers that are easy to dodge and will occasionally fly at us. Using Sandy, we use our lasso to deal damage. After his defeat, Spongebob blows a bubble ship for the Dutchman and we grab the gold spatula. So to end day 3, we head to the chum bucket where we need 75 gold spatulas to enter. Doing some cleanup around other levels as well as giving Patrick some more fossils, we gather the 75 need and it's time for the final boss. Plankton has created a Karate Steel Spongebob and a Robot Plankton. Karate Sponge isn't too bad as we need to shoot cruise bubbles at green spots to do damage but at the same time Robot Plankton is shooting bubbles at us. Also, the fish announcer is relentless during this fight just constantly yapping and yapping and yapping. Oh, the humanity, or should I say the fish Shut up. That does it. SpongeBob is back in the fight. Oh, close encounters of the painful kind. That's the ticket. And the robot is down. We defeat the steel sponge and it grows massive inflatable arms. Now inside the sponge, we need to navigate around the insides with bots attacking and robot plankton breathing down our neck. Using the cruise missile, we destroy the sponge's brain and we have officially completed Battle for Bikini Bottom. The gang celebrates as the robot invasion is now defeated and we can enjoy some credits while rolling around while we gather some more money, which we would need a ton of. This officially wraps up Day 3. Heading into Day 4, the goal is to clean up any levels we are yet to 100%, as well as take care of the post-game level of Spongebob's dream, the true challenge of this game. Now for the fun part, and honestly aside from Sand Mountain, the best part of the game. Spongebob's dream consists of some challenging platforming, enemies, and some interesting puzzles. Throughout the dream, other character dreams will appear that we must complete. We decide to tackle Sandy's dream first, and it's more sandboarding to the extreme. For some reason, cows are in this, and yes, I get Sandy is from Texas, but it feels so random. On top of a giant acorn, we can grab ourselves another gold spatula. Next up is Mr. Krabs' dream and it is a bot battlefield. So in order to destroy the duplication machines, we need to defeat some bots to deconstruct floating Krabby Patties. Being the Goomba I am, I didn't realize this at first so I kept defeating bots endlessly which isn't an awful thing as we need a ton of money later on. Destroying the final bot, Squidward rewards us with gold spatula number 86. We head to Patrick's dream and we just talk to the starfish and boom, gold spatula. 
At this point, I was missing two socks and a single gold spatula and I could not figure out what I have missed. I made sure to be very thorough and then it hit me. I never did Squidward's dream. I had walked right past his house multiple times. So heading back, we enter the final dream and the most difficult platforming in the game. Sheets of music stand in our way and we must navigate poorly played notes. Frustration kicked in early as I fell and fell and fell. I'm not sure what was going on and I blame being quite sick while doing this run because I swear my controls got inverted or someone was in game pushing me off notes. Frustration aside, there is a sock here that is placed in such an out of the way spot that getting it basically puts you near the start. I'm sure there's a proper way to get it, but the way I did, I basically had to restart. Anyways, after countless failures and face palms, the final dream had been conquered, and we are officially at the home stretch of the 100%. We head to Jellyfish Fields to grab our 80th and final fossilized sock. Our final gold spatulas are gate kept, but none other than Mr. Krabs, and he requires a whopping 39,500 shiny objects to purchase all the spatulas. Just ridiculous. Using Goo Lagoon, we were able to farm roughly 8 to 900 shiny objects every minute or so, but still, insanity. With the 100% officially complete, we have one final task to complete, unlocking the movie theater. This costs a whopping 40,000 shiny objects. Within, we can view various concept arts of levels, bosses, and enemies encountered throughout the game. Just a nice touch and reward for our efforts. Well, that's the 100%. I had a blast completing this game, and if you haven't already, feel free to sub and like the video. It goes a long way. Till next time, thanks for watching.